Good morning from my beautiful back deck. I thought I would do a show back here this morning. It's so lovely out and the sky is completely blue. The sun is out, which we haven't seen for a couple of days. So I figured why not do it from my back deck this morning. It's a beautiful day. You know, I work nice, but when I woke up to this this morning, I said, wow, I gotta go out in the back deck. There's no other way. Have my coffee and my cigar back on the deck. <clears throat> and continue on with the theme that I was talking about yesterday. Peace. There's so much distress and turmoil around us that how the heck can we have peace? Okay, that's the big question. Okay, am I going to start my day in turmoil or peace? Okay, am I going to be at peace toward God and realize that his operation is his operation fully? And I believe that's a matter of maturity as well. Because a lot of us aren't mature enough to see that. We, we wake up every day, we're miserable, and uh, we don't realize that God is giving you such a wonderful day to appreciate and love in His peace. And of course, if we don't realize the path to peace, we're never going to understand what it is. Now, I uh, <coughs> give an example of that. Okay, so lately I've been at peace and, and I've been content and understanding what, you know, this is awesome. You know, I have no worries. It seems that God has graced me with the sequel that I needed to learn uh, this through a path of trial and tribulation to understand and appreciate the peace of God. So on my side of the deal here... Um, I, I was at peace. Now, I say was until last weekend. So I'm giving you a little story here. Um, I went to my brother's, and my brother is a year older than me, my brother Rick. And I'm mentioning him, him on this show because I'm asking for your prayers for him. Now, uh, he, he overindulges, overindulges with, 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 with everything, everything. He uses it to the max. Um... And he doesn't enjoy what he's doing. Prior to me going to visit him, I was at the same level where I'm at right now. Uh, at peace and, and understanding that uh, there's more to enjoy in the peace of God than there is to struggle and fight against it. Um, so when I got to his place, and I wanted to spend some time with him because I hadn't spent any time with him two weeks prior to that because I had started my new job and everything was there so I didn't get a chance to see him but I went in there was no change like he is the same way um, <clears throat> he's doing uh, hard drugs which is like crack cocaine and cocaine and uh, he's drinking a lot I mean a lot every day drinking and this is something that's hurting my heart when I saw that on the weekend now, uh, I was trying to cheer him up, and I was trying to speak of spiritual things and, and continue to, uh, to, uh, to build him up and help him in the Lord, right? Uh, he has a little spark of belief there, okay? So this is what I was trying to build on. And um, I spoke of spirit things, spiritual things all night, but the more we progressed through the night, he was getting drunker and drunker, and... I don't know what he was doing when he went to the bathroom, whatever. I don't care. The whole point is he was getting more aggressive and more aggressive and more hateful towards spiritual things because I was I was ex expressing that with love toward him, but he wasn't seeing it and taking it that way. So at the end of the night, uh, before I left there because uh, I just couldn't take it anymore, um, he got extremely aggressive, called me outside, wanted to fight me. Uh, you know, this is childish stuff. Um, I refused and he came at me in the kitchen and we wrestled and he actually smashed me on side the face and that's when I left. He got extremely aggressive against me. So all I can do right now um, is ask you for prayers for him, my brother Rick. Um, I love him so much but I'm not fighting like that and I'm not uh, taking that them attacks and I call them attacks from the adversary I call them attacks from the wicked forces that are influencing him 
and this is this is hard and he, uh, for a couple of days even yesterday and the day before I was distressed about it I was very di distressed about it and uh, praying to God for him because I want him to realize that there is more better things you know take care of your stuff take care of your inner peace take care of all of that before you overindulge because it'll just rip you apart because that's your focus you're trying to escape from it by doing these things by overindulging drinking yourself to oblivion and and doing drugs so hard this is what I mean right you're trying to escape from it rather than uh, deal with it prior you know get rid of the alcohol get rid of the the drugs get rid of all that and find your peace toward God and uh, <clears throat> then maybe you might be able to enjoy some things in life this is give, this is the freedom we have in Christ you know we can enjoy what God has graced us with and not overindulge to a point of oblivion and uh, okay so that was my story and I just want your prayers I for him because um, he needs them he needs them very badly I just want to see him be happy, but he's not happy right now at all, and he's definitely not at peace. And I mentioned peace over and over and over through my show here. That's important because I'm kind of drilling it in a way, saying, you know, be at peace with God. Okay, so I'm going to start off a path of pain and peace where I was reading yesterday and continue on. Such is our expectation, but what of the path that lies between us and our goal? It is set with trials that oppress, afflictions and distresses that may dim our, dim our eyes with tears and blur the engaging vision. Can ex exaltation find a place in such a scene as this? No. We, are, we ask ourselves, our hearts by sickness, no. We ask our hearts by sickness straightened, uh, driven by distress, sinking in seas of sorrows, and not a sign of his hand to help. How many times are we going through trials and a bad situation from a human standpoint and not even see God? It's, we're so blurred. We can't even see God at that point. We're just sinking, sinking, sinking. Uh, and find its only answer in a doubt, okay? Doubting that God is really there. Doubting that God is actually... Uh, happy with you and God is actually at peace with you when you're going through all that are not all these tokens of his displeasure his indignation his wrath see this is what we question is he mad at us why is he putting us through all this is he really mad at us is he angry at us is he beating us down why is he beating us down as believers we we we, we, we believe this way we, we think this way when we're going through a, a bunch of crap And that makes it hard to even attain to any kind of peace. Our rebel heart denies that there is peace. Our traitor heart would breed sedition in the very citadel of love. How, oh how it swells and heaves our bosom with tempestuous, tempestuous, tempestuous waves of fear and pain, distrust and distrust, distrust and belief and unbelief. Sorry, I'm getting these words scrambled up today. That's okay. <clears throat> and and is the and is there one whose eyes have scanned these lines who has not harbored these? And is there one who is musing in the shadowed hour has not been galled by chains of dark distrust? Now, distrust meaning not trusting God. Not trusting that he's going to bring you through it. Only one can calm us, and he rises as he did on the Sea of Galilee, and lo, the tempest flees before his face. Be silent, be still. He has made peace. Let us then be at peace. And let us exult not only in, the future bl in that future bliss, in that enchanting glory, but even in the afflictions of this present hour. So take the trial, plant it in the love of God, and see it spread its roots of patient endurance and rear its stalwart trunk of testedness and bear its pleasant fruit expectation. 
Okay, these words are uh, from uh, the mystery of the gospel, and I hope you understand them. Uh, the wording in here is a little bit uh, back in the day, way back. So uh, I hope you enjoy, uh, bear with this. Okay, the Holy Spirit. God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit, which is being given to us. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Here is the spring of all true happiness. It is the way of, of love to give. But God's spiritual blessings cannot be entertained except by his own spirit. Our spirits can grasp the things pertaining to humanity, but divine affairs lie beyond that sphere. And so, first of all, God gives us his spirit, preliminary to his future further blessings. Thus we are enabled to perceive that which is being great, graciously given to us by God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. This is the channel through which his love has found entrance into our hearts. Only thus can we rejoice in the trials and afflictions and distresses. Apart from its balmy strength, they seem far more than, can, than we can hear. <coughs> when the issue stands in doubt, when the issue stands in doubt, the dread of future ill breeds death. But when we rest assured that his almighty power is guided by a heart whose every pulse beats the thoughts of love to us, then we can bear with patience every test. And we and as we endure the storms in the in this, his strength we become established like the enduring oak whose sturdy trunk has drawn its strength from the adverse winds. And so stripped of that which pleases us, below our eyes turn upward and we rejoice in expectation. Not only that sorrows will, will then cease and sighing flee away, but that we, we shall yet be all that we desire. Yes, all he desires. So that his love will find even in us a fit recompense of, and rest. Oh, to be like him, to be with him. We will satiate our hearts with him. Okay, so I'll stop there. God's grace, God's love, God's justif justification through Christ will bring you to that point of peace where you can enjoy the fact that we have the expectation and revel in the fact that we know that we have a, a calling and an expectation. To enjoy the expectation. through the trials and afflictions to bring us to that point of peace toward God. Okay, so it's a beautiful sunny day. I'm even going to take off my jacket. Look at that. Why not? It's hot right in the sun. So I'll take off my jacket. So today, uh, the theme of this yesterday's show and today's show is that we need to recognize and, and be at peace with God toward God. So I pray today that you are peace toward God instead of fighting and beating yourself to a bloody pulp, just fighting the world around you, just being just, oh, I can't stand this earth. I want to get out of here. How many times have I heard that, especially in uh, the body of Christ, the members of the body of Christ, a lot of them are crying out to God. I want to get out of here. Why the heck are we still here? You know, I say that too. But I don't say it as much when I have that peace towards God. Because God has given us this. This time. This time. Right now. To illuminate His love and His grace to the rest. So this is why we are here. We love them just as much as Christ loves them. Because we are in Christ. We have the Spirit of God in us. So we need to illuminate that to the rest. So we should be enjoying the fact that, okay, so we're going through our trials and afflictions. Big deal. We'll get through them because we know that God has a sequel for us. But they do not know that. We need to illuminate it to them, the peace of God. So this is why we are here. So why not enjoy while you're here all of that, the peace of God, the, the love of God, and illuminate it to the rest. And I guess that is my premise for these last couple of shows. I love you all in the Lord. Thank you for your prayers for, for my family. Thank you for the prayers for my brother. He needs them. He needs them so bad. And I thank you for them. Pray for my brother Rick. 
Um, I love you all in the Lord. And when I say that, I mean it. I love you all in the Lord. And my prayers are for you as well. I'm in continuous communication with God. Continuous petitions to God. To give you peace toward Him. To give you peace in your heart. And to give you that love of God that uh, makes you happy. Why not be happy? Why be distressed? You know? I know it's easy for me to say that to you. And you probably don't see it that way. You know, when you're going through all those... Uh, all the crazy crap that you're going through but uh, I do pray that you do see that in these messages so I will say grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ we will see you tomorrow folks and it's a beautiful day so I'm going to enjoy a little bit of it before I have to go to work